Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason with Simple Biz 360 Podcast uh, coming to you today uh, right before Christmas. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you. Uh, this is going to be a departure from our normal podcast program. And why is that? It's because there are just so many people out there dealing with fear and wrestling with alcoholism and drug addiction and, and thoughts of suicide and anxiety and, and just all kinds of things that stem from the 2020 that we're living through. There's just so much fear across the world. And I want to just uh, present to you something can be, that can be shared with these folks, something that can be uplifting. I'm going to rewind the clock and air out a lot of dirty laundry here for you to, to make my point. Uh, if I go back to the age of 15, I started drinking and went on a 14-year tear of drinking. It led to a very, very severe dependency on alcohol, and I became an alcoholic. I sprinkled in plenty of drug usage throughout this 14-year period, in addition to mischievousness, selfishness, lying, scheming. And if you, you look at my arrest record before I was 18 years old at nine, 10, 11 arrests, I'm not sure of the final count, but I got myself into a whole lot of trouble. I hurt a lot of people uh, in the process and I caused a lot of pain for myself in that process. Well, you know, as I got towards my later 20s, alcohol uh, was the the major drug of choice at that point. It's something I was relying on very, very heavily. Uh, my marriage had gone through marriage counseling. My wife was certainly not happy with me. There was a lot of uh, things that were troubling in our uh, relationship and our marriage. We were hanging on. And lo and behold, here comes December 24th, 1987. I walk into a church in Princeton, New Jersey, and what happened to me that night uh, was life changing, and I want to share that message with you today. And so, if you if you put Princeton, New Jersey, in context, and just think about it this way, it's pretty much the theological epicenter of the world in many cases, or at least at least uh, in North America. Here, for centuries, theologians have gotten together and they've talked about God. They've educated other people about God. They've written papers and they've they've written books about God and they pontificated. And it's all this that was that was done up in the head, in the mind. And it was in this church, I, I listened to a sermon preached that night. I was all by myself in this pew and, and the, the pastor said that this sermon was entitled, Walk into the Church in the Shadow of God, but walk out of the church overshadowed by God. And it was there in that pew at that moment that I just, I surrendered, not my mind to God, because I had made plenty of pacts with God over the years. I had plenty of discussions with him and said, hey, if I do this, you do that, and, you know, all these different things. And, and here it was in that pew that I realized it was all about opening up my heart and letting something into my heart that I'd never done before. And I hold up that spark plug because what I want to say to you is for all those years, those, those 14 years I was drinking and doing drugs, I was chasing something. I didn't know what I was chasing. My engine, my personal life engine, was a, there was a miss in it. It was like an eight-cylinder engine with seven spark plugs. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't get high enough. I couldn't mix the right drugs and alcohol combinations together. I couldn't get high long enough. I, I don't know what I was chasing, but I was just a miss. Something was off. So right there, when I listened to this sermon in my pew, in my seat, in this church, I didn't go up to an altar call. I didn't verbalize anything, but I opened my heart to God and I let Jesus in. And what I did basically was just accept that the that, that Jesus was who the Bible said he was. And I believe that he came and he died for me on a cross so that I could have a chance to restart my life. And, and I just, I said, God, I'm, I'm sorry, I, forgive me. And, and I confessed to God. And in that moment, everything changed. 
I could tell there was something going on inside me. It's it's hard to explain to this day. It was it was kind of a like a I don't, I don't know just a, a bubbling feeling in me. I don't know how to explain. It. I've never had the feeling again since then. But I do know this that I left that church a different person. And it wasn't until really a couple of days later, as everything started to settle in, that I realized, wow, you know, I, I I'm all of a sudden seeing blue skies and they're bluer. I'm seeing green evergreens and they're greener. And I and I'm I hadn't had a drink since the, the six pack I polished in an hour and a half on December 23rd, 1987. And here I was wondering what what in the world really happening to me. And, and I also realized at that moment that when when all this revelation kind of flooded me, was that my engine had no mist to it. There wasn't this clunkiness that I, and emptiness and loneliness and incompleteness that I have felt for, for 14 years. I, can't, I don't know how to explain it, but all of a sudden I realized I had that, that eighth spark plug in my life engine and it was Jesus. And I had been searching for this in all the wrong places for 14 years and here it was, it was Jesus. And so I, I share this with you today because it, I, my last drink was December 23rd, 1987. I didn't go through any 12-step program. I didn't, I didn't have to go to Alcoholics Anonymous every week. And, and listen, plenty of people do. And there's plenty of Christians that have to go through that. And, and so uh, I, I'm not saying what I'm not saying. You're not necessarily going to be um, rid of, of your alcohol condition or your drug usage. But what I am saying is, is there's a chance to restart everything with letting Jesus into your heart. And you get to, you get to start over again, basically. Uh, read John 3. Uh, if you take one verses 1 through 22, it's a great uh, a part of the Bible that explains what Jesus calls, it's not my terminology, it's what Jesus calls born, being born again. You've heard that terminology in the 70s and 80s, it might even have a negative connotation to it. But, but Jesus explains that, and that's that restarting process of our life. It gives you the ability to do life the way God intended us to do it. And, and the things that come with that, I can promise you this, that the Bible talks about the spirit of fear. That is not of God. God does not want you to be afraid. God wants you to find peace, rest, contentment, completeness. He wants you to find, um, you know, abundancy of life, which I never really understood. But the thing that's really, uh, that's really impressed me over the last 32 years and, and, you know, the, the Bible tells us about this is that we can experience a peacefulness that we cannot even explain. It's so overwhelming and so rewarding and so comforting that it surpasses all understanding. Therefore, we can't even tell you about it because we can't figure it out. But you have these things available to you when you make a heart decision not a head decision. And, and again, going back to that, that theological epicenter of North America, if you will, it, it was in that pew that night that, that God impressed on me. It has nothing to do with what you're thinking about in your head. It has everything to do with your heart and opening that up to me. So I just, I wanted to leave you with this message to share it, to send it to people who are suffering from despair and angst and anxiety and, and fear, and they're just overwhelmed with it. And they're, they may be in their basement right now uh, with a syringe ready. They may have their weapon out. They may have, uh, they may be just, just, you know, knee deep, ankle deep, eyeball deep in, in alcoholism. I don't know. But I know there's plenty of people out there that can hear this. And if, you know, if this is, if this at 62 years old is, is, you know, what I'm meant to do in just this short 10 minutes, and, and this is the purpose of my life, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm throwing it out on the internet. I'm throwing it out to people who need to hear it and telling you that there is something real 
Jesus was there yesterday, he's here today, and he will be here tomorrow. And you can do life with God through him by doing just what I explained I did in that pew that night in Princeton, New Jersey. So I, 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 hope, um, I hope this speaks to at least one person. And if it does, I'll consider it a, um, you know, a, a job well done and, and praise to God for that. And so I just leave you today with a lovely and really comforting Lost in the Shuffle track by Stephen Curtis Chapman. It's called The Invitation. It's a very, very tender song he did on his Speechless album in 1999. It fits today's message. And I just leave that with you. You'll see that uh, little uh, icon in the upper right-hand corner of your screen that you can tap onto. And uh, thank you, Terry Tierney, for getting me all these spark plugs. I really appreciate it because uh, I'm really enjoying sharing uh, my story with people who need to hear it. So folks, thank you so much. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>